Hello everyone, welcome aboard. This is going to be lesson number nine of Beginner's Java, and today, finally, at long last, we will begin talking about loops. Uh, loops are a pretty important part of programming. Um, basically, what a loop says is, until a condition is no longer met, keep doing this thing. And so, there are a few different kind of loops, but first, let's, let's talk about what I mean by a condition. So just like ifs have conditions, right? So the structure of an if is if condition, and we'll kind of put in parentheses here, true. Um, then we get some, some brackets and say do stuff, right? Well, the same exact thing is true for how loops work, right? We have um, while is, is the first kind of loop, condition, true, do stuff. Same, same exact uh, syntax, same exact everything, right? So let's look at how that works and, and kind of the, the power that that gives us, right? So let's say I wanted to do something like this. Uh, let's make it an integer, and we'll call it counter. We'll set that equal to zero. And we're going to say while counter is less than 10, system.out.println. Uh, and we'll just say counter, colon, plus counter. And so we'll throw in a counter plus plus here and give this a run. All right, and so we run this and we see that we get the numbers 0 through 9. Now, it's important to remember a few things. Um, that when we say less than 10, that means that the moment this value equals 10, that this is no longer true. So it exits. Now, what happens when I comment this out? What do you think, what do you think is going to happen? Right? Because counter is equal to 0 when we start. And now there's nothing adding to it. So counter plus plus just means, um, all that means really is the same as counter plus equals one, right? So that's all it actually means. So if that's all it really means, then when we run this without counter plus plus, well, this is what happens. This is what's known as an infinite loop. Um, it's a condition where we have a loop where the condition is always true. And to show you that, uh, let me just copy paste this out of here real quick. I'll just do uh, true in there and we'll let the same thing happen. So again, this all this is is a statement which resolves to a boolean uh, true or false. So well, we'll keep this working, right? Um, oh, and I pulled out a semicolon there. Okay, so very simple so far, right? Um, very, very elementary. Now, there's another kind of loop, and this loop is a little bit more difficult. So the loop I'm talking about is uh, a, a do-while loop. So the way do-while loops work is something like this. Um, and, and first, let me explain the function. So the way do while loops work is like this. So or let me make that a bit better. Uh, we'll say do stuff dot 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 while. Okay. Um, so okay. What a do while loop does and, and what's interesting about it is that it always executes the loop 
at least one time. So that means that anything that's inside of this do is happening at least once. So with a while loop, if we set the counter equal to 11, it's not going to do anything, right? Because it's already over 10. So this is, yeah, even IntelliJ says, well, counter is always false. So I don't know what you're doing. So, okay, uh, let's just set it equal to 9, uh, or let's set it equal to 0 again, just so we have that output. Actually, better yet, let's just comment that whole bit out, just so we focus on the task at hand. And so we'll create uh, another counter. Um, I'm just going to call it i, and I'm going to say i equals 0. And so here we're going to say... Uh, system.out.println and we'll just say i and then plus comma space right and let's actually do this all in one line and we'll say while i is less than 10 and then we'll come over here and we'll say system.out.print i and we'll leave it at that, right? And what do you think that this is going to print? So again, it's going to be 1 through 10, right? Um, however, since I used print rather than println, it's all going to be on one line. And it's going to be separated by commas followed by a space. And then, once we exit the loop, we're going to put the last number on, not followed by a comma. So when we run this, <laughs> see, this is how easy it is to make an infinite loop. Um, and the downside to infinite loops, as you see, uh, sometimes you have to click a few times to uh, make your computer catch up to you. So we'll say I++ there, and we'll give it another run. And so, as you see, we've now printed out all the numbers 0 through 10 uh, with a comma and a space uh, after each of them. So, as, I mean, I'm sure you can see without me elaborating and prattling on that, you know, this is, this is a fairly powerful thing. Um, lastly, we do have one more type of loop. And this last type of loop is probably the most complicated out of them, and it is going to take the most practice to get used to, but it's also the most used kind of loop. Um, I actually find that the do while loop is the least used kind of loop, and uh, between while and do while, uh, you, you have most of it. But the most used kind of loop is a for loop. And a for loop has three distinct parts to it. It has the initialization. Um, let me actually just specify that there's three parts to it. Initialization, condition, and increment incrementation. So the way that you'll normally see this loop uh, set up is something like this. You'll see, and once again I'm going to comment this out, just because I'm going to use i. So for me the, the letter I usually use as a counter is always i. Sometimes I'll use j, sometimes I'll use k. Uh, if I need to have three or four counters going at once, but generally it's i. A lot of people use i. I really don't know why. Maybe it's short for integer. Um, so we'll start by saying int i equals zero. i is less than 10. i plus plus. And then I'll, I'll steal my, my last thing from over here. And the catch with this now brings into uh, our view another lesson. 
So see how I can't put 10 there? Because if I put it inside the loop, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be invalid. But if I try to place it outside the loop, like I did earlier, uh, I, this is going to give me an error, right? And it's saying cannot resolve symbol I. And the reason why is an extremely important part of computer programming. So this, these uh, little curly brackets here are called scoping brackets. or braces. Um, and so what they do is they dictate a scope. And so what a scope means is that you have this little encapsulated area from the beginning of your scope to the end of your scope, where if you declare any variables or you do any type of, of work and it's not saved inside the loop, then you lose it. So now you might be saying, well, then aren't for loops useless? And the answer is no. Because see, maybe I have something like this. And I say int i equals zero out here. And then, amusingly, I can get rid of the initialization. And I can just leave that semicolon there, meaning I'm not going to initialize anything. I'm good. And I run it, and we end up with exactly what we ended up with before. Now you might say, well, that doesn't seem very useful. Like, what is this actually used for? And the answer is, if I don't need this, this variable outside of the loop, if I never need it again, right, then I can simply go like this. And I'll just comment this line out. I, I run it, and you know I end up with 0 through 9. But what if I want to say less than a 1,000? and I want to count by 10. That's how easy it is. I can just change that number right there real easily. Boom, just count it to 1,000 by 10. Um, obviously excluding 1,000. But if I wanted to output 1,000, I can just change that to less than or equal to. And so once again, you know, run, run the program and we get 1,000. And so you might say, okay, well, that looks kind of ugly. This, this last number has a comma after it, right? So let's make this a little bit prettier by combining the, the for loop with the if statement. So we'll say um, if, um, ah, so there's actually one statement I haven't introduced, or one operator that I haven't introduced to you. Uh, and it's called the modulo operator. And all the modulo operator is, is the percent symbol. And what that means is if you divide a number by another number, take the remainder. So you might be saying, okay, what? So remember when you were young and very first learning to divide, the teacher would give you something like this. They'd say 10 divided by 6. And you would say 1 remainder 4. What modulo means is exactly the same thing. So you say 10 modulo 6, and that actually equals 4, right? The, because it goes in once evenly, and then you're le you have four left over. So basically, it's the remainder from division. So I tend to use the modulo operator probably more than, than the average person. Uh, back when I learned how to code in, in C, uh, you would use the, the modulo operator a fair amount uh, to do things like this. So we can say if... Uh, I modulo 10 equals 0. Uh, 
system.out.println. And so that's just going to put a blank line there uh, if, if that statement is true. So if we do this, you'll see that... <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, so what happened here is uh, I, I obviously didn't think this through, right? Because I'm adding 10 each time. I should have done 100 because, right, if I do 100, I'm going to get 10 of these per line and then it's going to break and it's going to look nice. So see how that worked out? That worked out nice. But now let's say I wanted to get rid of this, this uh, comma at the end of each line because oh, that doesn't look very good. So now we can set up another if statement, right? We can say if um, I modulo 100 uh, and then equals 0 system dot out dot print I else then we'll grab this I comma just like that and so since we have two of these that are, are the same I'll just combine them right just add this system dot out dot print I there and then we can get rid of this second one. And so now, when we run lesson 9, we end up with our values almost exactly the way we, we want them to, right? But see how 0 is on its own line? And it's kind of making everything look ugly and look like we didn't really plan it through. How would we have this... Uh, what, what could we change to make that you know, look the same as all the other lines. Take a minute to think about it. All right, you got it? And the answer is we're going to come right here into this if statement, and we're going to say and i is greater than zero. Just like that. And so now once we run this program one last time, we have everything looking pretty much how we want it to. Um, so this is your intro to loops, and Loops are extremely hard to get a grasp of, especially when you're a new programmer. So definitely take some time and, and conceptualize where this fits into your toolkit, because this is going to be something that if you become a professional programmer, you are going to see every day for the rest of your life. I also realize that Curly does not have an E in it. That's why it was complaining. Um, and I'm pretty sure I spelled initialization wrong. I-N-I-T-I-A-L-I-Z-A-T-I-O-N, right? Yeah, okay. So, one of the things about programmers were horrible spellers. But anyways, uh, figure out, you know, where this fits in your toolkit, because you will use it regularly. All right, with that said, I'm Damien. This has been uh, your introduction to loops. Uh, I'm going to leave this one off here. Please like, subscribe, or, you know, tell a friend if this has helped you out. See ya!